Here we're going to get ready to get started. Ask the brothers, uncover your heads. Sisters, cover your heads. We're going to stand up, face Jerusalem, and open up. Our Father which art in heaven. Our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. In earth. In earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day. Give us this day. Our daily bread. Our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. And forgive us our debts. As we forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation. And lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. But deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. Praise the Lord God of Almighty. Praise the Lord God Almighty. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. These things we pray in Jesus' name. These things we pray in Jesus' name. The Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. The Mighty One of Jacob. The Mighty One of Jacob. The Lord of Lords. The Lord of Lords. And King of Kings. And King of Kings. Amen. Amen. Our scripture reading comes from Psalms 119, verses 1 through 8. Blessed are the undefiled in the way who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are they that keep his testimonies and that seek him with a whole heart. They also do no iniquity. They walk in his ways. Thou hast commanded us to keep thy precepts diligently. Oh, that my ways were directed to keep thy statutes. Then shall I not be ashamed when I have respect unto all thy commandments. I will praise thee with uprightness of heart. When I shall have learned thy righteous judgments, I will keep thy statutes, O forsake me not utterly. Once again, our scripture reading was from Psalms 119, verses 1 through 8. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And peace to everybody that's here in the name of Jesus. Welcome to... Friday night Sabbath class, be it those that are viewing us, peace in Jesus' name, those that are on the internet, and uh, those that are here, of course. Uh, today's lesson, we're going to be dealing with whether you be good or evil, God has an app for that. Whether you be good or evil, God has an app for that. We live in this day and age in a technological uh, uh, time. You know, technology is, is just booming. You know, it went from, uh, at one time, it, they, they talked about uh, these big uh, towers, you know, these big old uh, consoles that made up computers back in the 60s and the 70s. You know, they, uh, and, and as, as time went forward, as time went on, uh, the computers started shrinking smaller and smaller until we have what we got today, you know, we have these little cell phones. You know, so when I say God has an app for that, I use the word app because, like, these cell phones that we have, they called, you know, you have uh, programs called applications on these, on these cell phones. You know, uh, in short, they call them apps. And they can do a whole lot of things. You know, they can tell you the weather. You know, they could, they could tell you the, the direction, where you are. You know, they could pinpoint your, your direction. You know, they could... They could tell you, uh, 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 they can, you could text somebody, they could text you back. You know, you can, you can do all types of things besides call other people. You know, you could take pictures and send them across the world in seconds. You know, they have uh, uh, the, the app Facebook. You know, you could take a picture of somebody today and, and right now, and it'll be right on the Internet across the world in, in zero seconds time flat. You know, you can do all types of things with these cell phones. Uh, we marvel at the, the uh, uh, wisdom of man from time to time. We see what man is capable of doing. We see that, you know, all this, this technology, like I mentioned, how, how advanced it is. You know, we can do all types of things, and, and, and this is only the stuff that we see. And I'm pretty sure they have a whole lot of other things that we have no knowledge of that they are capable, capable of doing, you know. But, again... Uh, 
we marvel at what man can do and all the things that all the stuff that he's capable of with all the wisdom he has, but the wisdom that he has comes from the Lord. Everything that he has, and he won't admit it, but everything he has comes from the Lord. So if man is capable of doing all this, of having all this wisdom that we see, think of what God is capable of doing, that and, and, and over and abundant. He says all the nations are but a drop in the bucket. Meaning what, what all, the, all these nations, all, of, all the nations of the world know don't mean dilly squat when it comes down to the Lord. Because the Lord, he created all things. He's the creator of answers. He's the creator of all things. So when I say whether you be good or evil, God has an app for that. Just like there's an app on our cell phones for all types of things that we, that we need, the Lord, he has an app for everything. And he has an answer for everything. You can't, get by, you can't get by him with, 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 with the way you think or your way of righteousness or what you regard as good. You understand? And if you uh, are evil, there's no escaping God and his judgment. So, again, whether you be good or evil, God has an app for that. He has an app. He can meet you wherever you are and deal with you. So we're going to start. We're going to look at the lesson. We're going to start in Deuteronomy Chapter 32. We're going to read a couple of verses. Deuteronomy chapter 32, and we're going to pick it up at verse 39. Deuteronomy 32 and verse 39. Go ahead. See now that I, even I, am he, uh -huh. and there is no God with me. There is no other God. It's only one God. Go ahead. I kill, uh -huh. and I make a lie. See, a lot of people don't understand. God, he kills. He kills, and he's proven it time and time again. God is dangerous. He said, I kill. He said, I am he, and there is no God with me. I kill. Go ahead. I kill, uh -huh. and I make a lie. Uh -huh. I wound, uh -huh. and I heal. He can hurt you, and then he can heal you. Go ahead. Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. There is nobody that can deliver you out of the hands of the Lord. Nobody. Let's look at our Isaiah 45. We're going to look at another scripture. It's pretty much saying the same thing, but it's good that we know these things. You know, we read them time and time again because it's good that we be reminded over and over again who we're dealing with and what, he's, what his capabilities are. So that way we keep ourselves in order because we know what he's capable of doing. Uh, Isaiah 45, and pick it up at verse 5. Isaiah 45 and verse 5. Go ahead. I am the Lord. And there is none else. There is no God beside me. Uh -huh. I girded thee, though thou hast not known me. The Lord is in control of everything. Your very breath is, is in the Lord's hands. Go ahead. Verse 6. That they may know from the rising of the sun and from the west uh -huh. that there is none beside me. Uh -huh. I am the Lord, and there is none else. There is none else. Go ahead. I form the light uh -huh. and create darkness. He formed the light and he create darkness. The Lord, hey, uh, Brother Boy made a statement before and it always stuck with me. There is, you know, uh, there uh, is a war going on, but the war is right in between your ears. It's between good and evil in between your ears. So he said, I form the light, I create darkness. Go ahead. I make peace uh -huh. and create evil. He makes peace and he creates evil. Go ahead. I, the Lord, do all these things. He does all these things. See, again, the Lord, he has an out for everything, whether you be good or whether you be evil. And in Amos chapter 3, he t it talks about evil, how, he, how evil cannot happen unless the Lord does it. We're going to look at one, one more place, and it's not in the lesson, but Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21. We're going to look at one more place, place, Proverbs 21. Because, again, it's important that we remember at all times who we dealing with, and what he's capable of doing. Proverbs 21 and verse 30. Proverbs 21 and verse 30. Go ahead. There is no wisdom, nor understanding, nor counsel against the Lord. You cannot outthink the Lord. You can't outthink the Lord. If you cross the Lord, there is nobody that can help you. Nobody can, that can deliver you out of the Lord's hands. And the person that you think that might could, that, that could probably, probably deliver you, the Lord will fix it so he smack you upside the head. There is no counsel against the Lord. Matthew chapter 5. 
Matthew chapter 5. So in, in, in knowing all these things, keeping these things in mind, these things are good for us to know so that we have some understanding as to who we're dealing with. Somebody that has an answer for everything. Whether you be good or whether you be evil, he can deal with you. No matter where, where you at, he can deal with you. Matthew chapter 5 and verse, 40, verse 44. Matthew 5 and verse 44. So how, is, how should we be considering all these that he can deal with us on all points? How should, what, what should our attitude be on a daily basis? Go ahead. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Uh-huh. Bless them that curse you. Hey, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Don't, don't worry about it. You know, bless them that curse you. Go ahead. Do good to them that hate you. Do good to them that hate you. Now, now that's contrary to how the way the, lo- the, the world has it. You know, they say, hey, and, I, I mean, and the scripture does say I for an eye and a two for a two. But the Lord wants to turn the other cheek. He wants, he wants us to know that, hey, you don't worry about that. Vengeance belongs to him. Belo- v- vengeance belongs to the Lord. He can take care of all of that. You just do your part. He said, but I said to you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you. Go ahead. And pray for them that despitefully use you uh-huh. and persecute you. I used to wonder, I said, I used to think, well, why, why should we pray for them that, 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 that despitefully use us? You know, why should we pray for them, them that persecute us? Why? Because they will need some pet prayer. Because you cannot get them the way that they need to be got. But see, the Lord can. That and then some. See, so when you know that you're dealing with somebody that has an answer for everything and everybody, and he truly has an answer, this, all you need to do is just rest in the Lord and do your part. He said, he said, bless them that curse you. He said, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you. And again, that's contrary to how the, how the, uh, the world go about doing things. They do things totally opposite. You know, that's why you got all this killing in the street now. He said, and pray for them that despitefully use you and persecute you. Go ahead. Verse 45, that ye may be the children of your father, which is in heaven. Because we're we trying to be just like our father. Go ahead. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good uh-huh. and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. So when you see people that look like they're just getting away with all types of drama and all that, hey, the Lord got their number. You just, again, you just got to do your part because you know what your walk is about. You got to make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to be doing because, again, the Lord has an app for all that, and he don't forget. We, f- we might forget, but God never forgets. He said he sends the rain on the just and on just. Go ahead. Did you finish that? That's Let's look at Genesis, Genesis chapter 28. We're going to look at a couple examples now of how the Lord has an app for good and evil. Genesis chapter 28, and we're going to pick it up at verse 1. Genesis chapter 28 and verse 1. We're going to deal with with Laban and how he treated his nephew Isaac. You know, know, uh, Laban was was, uh, Isaac's uncle. You know, he's scheming, you know, from what the scripture, uh, from how the scripture uh, speak of him. He was scheming, but the Lord had his number. And it was good that Jake, it was good that Isaac knew how to go about dealing with things. And he didn't get bent out of shape and just leave because that's not how they got down. Genesis chapter 28 and pick it up at verse 1. Genesis 28 and verse 1. Go ahead. And Isaac called Jacob and blessed him and charged him and said unto him, Thou shalt not take a wife of the daughters of Canaan. He said, hey. Don't you take none of them women of Canaan, but I got somebody for you. Because we know and you're getting older now, and you, it's time for you to get a wife. So he said, no, but, but don't take the wife of them daughters of Canaan. Go ahead. Arise, go to Padanaram, to the house of Bethuel, thy mother's father, uh-huh. and take thee a wife from thence of the daughters of Laban, thy mother's brother. So that's his uncle. Go ahead. And God Almighty bless thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee that thou mayest be a multitude of people. Now remember, the Lord, uh, Isaac, his father, he blessed him. He said, the, he said uh, and God Almighty blessed thee and make thee fruitful and multiply thee. So again, this, he blessed his, he blessed his son and sent him on his way. And the Lord, again, the Lord take note of all that. And I, uh, Isaac will be multiplied. Go ahead. Uh, yes. Skip down to, uh, let's look at uh, Genesis chapter 
uh, 29 now. Skip over to uh, chapter 29, 29, and we're going to read starting at verse 1. Genesis 29 and verse 1. Go ahead. Then Jacob went on his journey and came into the hand of the people of the east. Uh -huh. And he looked, and behold, a well in the field. And lo, there were three flocks of sheep lying by it. Mm -hmm. For out of that well they watered the flocks. And a great stone was upon the well's mouth. Go ahead. And thither were all the flocks gathered. And they rolled the stone from the well's mouth and watered the sheep. Mm -hmm. And put the stone again upon the well's mouth in its place. Okay, so Jacob, he at the place now, go, but go ahead. Verse 4. And Jacob said unto them, My brethren, whence be ye? And they said, Of Haran mm -hmm. are we. Go ahead. And he said unto them, Know ye Laban, the son of Nahor? And they said, we know him. We know him. So now he know he in the right place now. He already had arrived at his, at, his, at his uncle's, on his uncle's land. Go ahead. Verse 6. And he said unto them, is he well? And they said, he is well. Mm -hmm. And behold, Rachel, his daughter, cometh with the sheep. Now we know eventually he, this is going to be Isaac's wife right here. He said, Rachel, I'm sorry, this is going to be Jacob's, this is going to be Jacob's wife right here. Uh, skip down to uh, verse 13 and read. Genesis 29 and verse 13. Because again, now Isaac had sent his son on, on a journey. So he didn't get, because uh, he, he, he didn't want him to take other wives of the daughters of Canaan. So he sent them to Laban, his uncle. And now Jacob finally got there. And now he's meeting Rachel now. Go ahead. Skip, it, uh, Genesis uh, 29 and verse 13. Go ahead. And it came to pass when Laban heard the tidings of Jacob, his sister's son, that he ran to meet him mm -hmm. and embraced him and kissed him and brought him to the house. And he told Laban all these things. He told Laban what's happening. He told Laban that he's there to get a wife. And, he's, and uh, if we would have read up a couple more scriptures, and I, I didn't put them in there for the sake of time, we, we would have read that when he saw Rachel and he kissed her, he started crying. He like, you know, he was blown away, I guess. He started crying and weeping. I mean, that's love. That's, 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 that's love, black love. Go ahead. Verse 14. And Laban said to him, Surely thou art my bone and my flesh. Uh -huh. And he abode with him the space of a month. And he abode with him for a space of a month. He, he, stayed there, he stayed there with Laban. Go ahead. And Laban said unto Jacob, Because thou art my brother, shouldest thou therefore serve me, <coughs> serve me for not? Mm -hmm. Tell me, what shall thy wages be? Now he want to know what his wage is going to be. Well, How is he going to get paid? Because he's going to work for, he working, you know, for his uncle. And his uncle say, look, you know, uh, I'm not going to let you be around here just working for nothing. You know, what you, how much you want to get paid? What, 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 what you want me to pay you? Go ahead. And Laban had two daughters. The name of the elder was Leah, mm -hmm. and the name of the younger was Rachel. Go ahead. Leah was tender-eyed, mm -hmm. but Rachel was beautiful and well-favored. And we know, again, that's the one that he wanted. But, we, but in Mrs. Leah, Leah was tender-eyed, and Rachel was beautiful. So, you know, it says Rachel was beautiful, so the opposite of beautiful, maybe Leah was kind of, you know. But go ahead. Verse 18. And Jacob loved Rachel and said, I will serve thee seven years for Rachel, thy younger daughter. Uh -huh. And Laban said, it is better that I give her to thee than that I should give her to another man. Mm -hmm. Abide with me. See, now Laban was like, yeah, I give it to you. But see, he already got in, his, in the back of his mind. We're going to read it, too. He already got in the back of his mind. He's not going to give uh, him Rachel right away. It, and we're going to read it. But go ahead. Verse 20. And Jacob served seven years for Rachel. And they seemed unto him but a few days mm -hmm. for the love he had for her. But had love, her. Now, now that's love because he's willing to work for his wife, do whatever he needs to do to work for his wife. And that's, why, that's, that's a good example for us as brothers. Hey, we w uh, work for, to provide for our household. We build what we need to build, and we bring our wives to what we build. We don't go to what they build. We build it, and they come to it. That's what, that's what, that's what our forefathers did, and we are our father's children. So we should be the same way. We should build and, they, and bring them to it. But go ahead. And Jacob said unto Laban, Give me my wife, for my days are fulfilled, uh -huh. that I might go in unto her. Give me my woman. Go ahead. And Laban gathered together all the men of the place and made a feast. Now Laban, he already scheming. He didn't gather together the men. Now they, they out there partying because now he finna take his wife. But go ahead. And it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah, 
his daughter uh-huh. and brought her unto brought her to him mm-hmm. and he went in unto her. See, now he knew the, he knew the deal already, but he going to come with with his oldest daughter daughter leader, the, the tender eyed one. Well, go ahead. And Laban gave unto his daughter Leah Zil- Zilpah, his maid for a handmaid. Uh-huh. And it came to pass that in the morning behold, it was Leah. Uh-huh. And he said unto Laban, "What is this Thou hast done unto me. Now, he didn't woke up because evidently he did a little bit too much partying, and he didn't know who he was dealing with. So he messed with, He woke up the next morning like, what's going on? This is, you know, you didn't gave me the wrong one. But watch what Laban say. Go ahead. Did I not serve with thee for Rachel? Mm-hmm. Wherefore then hast thou beguiled me? He said, you didn't beguiled me. You didn't trick me. Go ahead. And Laban said, it must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. See, he knew it all the time what he was going to do. Laban knew it all the time. He knew all the time what he was going to do. He knew, he already knew the custom of the land. He said in verse 26, and Laban said, it must not be done, it must not be so done in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. So that didn't just change after he slept with Leah. He knew that already from jump. He already knew what he was going to do, but he was scheming. He beguiled Jacob. Uh, Go ahead, keep reading. 27. Fulfill her week. And we will give thee this also for the service which thou shalt serve with me yet seven other years. Now he's changing it up. After he made, after he made a covenant with, with Jacob, now all of a sudden he changed. Now he's going to get some more free labor. But again, the Lord see all this. Whether you be good or evil, God has an app for that. We're going to read that later. We're going to read what's going to happen. So now he's going, now he wants him to work another seven years for Rachel. Go ahead, uh, uh, Skip, uh, let's look at, did you, go ahead and finish 28. And Jacob did so and fulfilled her week. Mm-hmm. And he gave him Rachel, his daughter, to wife also. Now he ends up with Rachel. Now he got, but now he got, he has Rachel and he has Leah and he has both the handmaids. So he got four, he got four, he got, uh, uh, he got two, so far he got two all uh, wives and then he got two handmaids now. So now let's skip down to, uh. And he, well, actually going to end up with four, but as of right now, he only has two, two wives. He got Leah and he got Rachel. But let's skip down to uh, uh, Genesis chapter 30 now. Genesis chapter 30. Because again, you know, he didn't scheme. He didn't scheme, gave him the wrong, gave him the firstborn, gave him uh, Leah. Then turned around and gave up Rachel. And he knew all the time what he was going to do. He knew all the time what he was going to do. So now, you know, that's, that would give you the eye suspect. You you are uh, 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 running to somebody that tells you one thing and they do another. You're going to look at them strange. You're going to have that eye suspect on them all the time, all the time. And you don't really need to because guess what? The Lord, he got it all ready. And remember, Isaac had prayed for it. Isaac told his son, he said, be fruitful and multiply. So the Lord even got that in working, whereas uh, uh, Jacob is going to be fruitful and he's going to multiply. But again, the Lord, he got the, he got the app already working here. Genesis chapter 31 and pick uh, Genesis chapter 30 and pick it up in verse 22. Genesis 30 and verse 22. Go ahead. And God remembered Rachel and God hearkened to her and opened her womb. Now, prior to this, the, uh, Jacob, he had, he, I guess he was, he had some type of little animosity. He didn't like Leah like he was supposed to. He didn't love Leah like he was supposed to. He had a little animosity or something. And the Lord, he, he blessed Leah and kept, go, kept, kept blessing her with son after son after son. And finally, he ended up uh, blessing Rachel and opened up her womb. But go ahead. 23. And she conceived and bare a son and said, God have taken away my reproach. So now he, now Jacob, he, he's being fruitful and multiplying, but that's based on what Laban had did in, 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 at, at the beginning when he had gave up Leah instead of Rachel. And the way he felt for Leah, the way he felt about Leah, the Lord started opening up Leah's womb more and more. And remember, uh, Isaac had said, hey, be fruitful and multiply. So the Lord, all, he had it all in working. He see everything. The, work, the Lord is working on both ends here. Go ahead. And she called his name Joseph and said, the Lord shall add to me another son. Go ahead. And it came to pass when Rachel had born Joseph that Jacob said unto Laban, send me away Mm -hmm. that I may go into mine own place Mm -hmm. and to my country. So now Jacob, he got his wives, he got his son, he got his kids. Now he's ready to leave. Jacob was a good worker. 
Jacob worked, Jacob worked hard. Laban saw that. So now he's like, well, look, I'm ready to get out of here. I got my wives. You know, go and let, just let me go. Go ahead. 26. Give me my wives and my children for whom I have served thee mm -hmm. and let me go. Go ahead. For thou knowest my servants which I have done thee. Uh -huh. And Laban said unto him, I pray thee, if I have found favor in thine eyes, tarry. Now, Jacob, he, he, he talking to Jacob, the same one. He done, he done flipped the script on him earlier by giving him Leah. Go ahead. For I have learned by experience that the Lord hath blessed me for thy sake. See, and when he said that, he should have been, he should have been kind of watching what he was saying because if the Lord had blessed him for his sake, why did he play uh, Jacob to the, why he played Jacob like he did earlier? But again, go ahead. The Lord see it all. Go ahead. And he said, Appoint me, my, appoint me thy wages, uh -huh. and I will give it. Go ahead. And he said unto him, Thou knowest how I have served thee, and how thy cattle was with me. For it was, for it was little which thou hadst before I came, and it is now increased unto a multitude. Uh -huh. And the Lord hath blessed thee since my coming. And now when I shall provide for mine own house also. See, so now he, they're talking about the wage, and, he's, and he talking about the, they're talking about the cattle. But uh, on the way to learning something, we're we, we looking at something, and we're going to learn something on the way to go, uh, learn something else, that Jacob, the Lord had blessed Jacob's hand while he was going through what he was going through. He was blessing his hand. And the Lord would do the same thing. And that's the beautiful thing about it. God don't ever change. And a lot of times we got to get a grip and kind of like pause for a minute. Because when the Lord's in control of everything and you're doing your part, he got to act for good too. He got to, he got to act. He, he working it on both ends. All you have to do is rest in the Lord and don't panic. Because the Lord, he's in control of everything. And he see everything that's going on. So while Jacob was going through what he was going through, he was, being, he was having all these kids and Laban treating them all, Laban treating them. Bad like he did. Now the Lord had blessed his hand and increased Laban's flock while, while, Joseph, uh, while Jacob was working for him. But why did he do it? We're going to see. Go ahead. 31. And he said, what shall I give thee? And Jacob said, thou shalt not give me anything. Don't give me nothing. I'm working for everything I got. He said, don't give me nothing. He said, what shall I give thee? Give thee? Jacob said, thou shalt not give me anything. Go ahead. If thou would do this thing for me. I will again feed and keep thy flock. Uh -huh. I will pass through all thy flock today, removing from thence all the speckled and spotted cattle and all the brown cattle among the sheep uh -huh. and the spotted and speckled among the goats. Uh -huh. And of such shall be my hire. So shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come when it shall come for my hire before thy face. Everyone that is not speckled and spotted among the goats and brown among the sheep, mm -hmm. that shall be counted stolen with me. He said, all these, he said, he said my righteousness is going to answer for, for me myself. My righteousness is going to speak for me. Verse 33, he said, so shall my righteousness answer for me in, in time to come when it shall come to, when it shall come for my highest before thy face. And that's the same way again that we need to think. We going through drama, we being mistreated and all this other stuff. Hey, let our righteousness show for us. You know, let our righteousness prove it for us. Let our righteousness speak for us. Because, again, the Lord see everything. Whether you be good or evil, God has an app for that. He says, so shall my righteousness answer for me in time to come when it shall come for my hire before thy face. And you're going to see it. Go ahead. 34. And Laban said, behold, I would it might be according to thy word. Go ahead. And he removed that day he, he, the he goats that were re restricted. Let me start again. 35. Mm -hmm. And he removed that day the he goats that were ring straked and spotted, and all the she goats that were speckled and spotted, and every one that had some white in it, mm -hmm. and all the brown among the sheep, and gave them into the hand of his sons. Now he got all the, he, all the ones, all these, he, got, he gave those into the hand of his son. Those are his. Go ahead. And he said, Three days' journey betwixt himself and Jacob, and Jacob fed the rest of Laban's flock. Uh -huh. And Jacob took him rods of green poplar and of the hazel and chestnut tree, and piled white strakes in them, and made the white appear which was in the rods. Mm -hmm. And he set the rods which he had peeled before the flocks in the gutters, in the watering troughs, where the flocks came to drink, that they should conceive when they came to drink. Now he get now he fixed it so these so these so the flocks for, so the flocks gonna have the white strakes and they gonna come out a certain way. But go ahead. And the flocks conceived before the rods and brought forth cattle ring straight, speckled and spotted. Uh -huh. And Jacob did separate the lambs and set the faces of the flocks toward the ring straight 
and all the brown in the flock of Laban. And he put his own flocks by themselves and put them not unto Laban's cattle. Now, he separated them. He getting all the good ones, and then Laban getting all, he's getting all the other ones. Go ahead. And it came to pass, whensoever the stronger cattle did conceive, that Jacob laid the rods before the eyes of the cattle in the gutters, that they might conceive among the rods. Uh -huh. But when the cattle were feeble, he put them not in. So the feebler were Laban's, and the stronger Jacob's. So, ja so in the end, all the sick and the feeble ones, all the weak ones, Laban got all the weak ones, and Jacob got all the strong cattle. He got all the good cattle. All the good came to Jacob, but Laban, he lost out on a whole lot. Go ahead. 43. And the man increased exceedingly, and had much cattle, and maid servants, and men servants, and camels, and asses. So now Jacob, he didn't get, he didn't get rich. Of Laban. Laban wanted him to stick around, so the Lord and the Lord had to put it in his mind to ask him that. So now Laban asked Jacob to stick around. Jacob did. Jacob ended up getting all Laban's flock, all the good, all the strong cattle, all the strong goats and all that. And Laban got all the feeble and the weak ones. So now the Lord he done flipped the script on Laban. So now let's look at uh, Genesis chapter 31 at now. Go to Genesis 31 and verse 1. Genesis 31 and verse 1. One. So now he got all the feebler ones, and now the, now the, the, the cat is going to be out the bag. Go ahead. And he heard the words of Laban's sons, saying, Jacob hath taken away all that was our father's, uh -huh. and of that which was our father's hath he gotten all this glory. He said, Jacob got all your stuff. Go mm -hmm. ahead. And Jacob beheld the countenance of Laban, uh -huh. and behold, it was not toward him as before. Now Laban got the evil eye on Jacob. He got the evil eye on Jacob after he did what after he did what he did to Jacob, giving him Leah and all this other stuff. So now Jacob got the now Jacob ended up getting all he got rich off Laban. Now Laban looking at Jacob like he got a problem. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Jacob, Return unto the land of thy fathers mm -hmm. and to thy kindred, mm -hmm. and I will be with thee. Okay, now go on, now, now the jig is up. Go ahead back home, man. Go ahead. Verse four. And Jacob sent and called Rachel and Leah to the field unto his flock and said unto them, I see your father's countenance, that it is not toward me as before. Uh -huh. But the God of my father hath been with me. He said, I see how he's looking at me. He, his, his countenance didn't fail. So now he mad at me. Go ahead. And you know that with all my power I have served your father, uh -huh. and your father hath deceived me. Now, it wasn't no secret. Jacob knew what he was doing. Jacob knew how Laban was getting down. He said, your, fa he said, your father has deceived me. Go ahead. And changed my wages ten times. Ch kept ch I'm ch changing his mind. I'm going to give you this. No, I'm going to give you this. No, I'm going to give you this. I'm going to give you this. Kept changing his wages, and he, he said he changed them ten times. Go ahead. But God suffered him not to hurt me. Uh-huh. If he said thus, the speckled shall be thy wages, then all the cattle bear speckled. Mm -hmm. And if he said thus, the ring straight shall be thy hire, then bear all the cattle ring straight. Mm -hmm. Thus God have taken away the cattle of your father and given them to me. So who took away the cattle of his father? God did it. God did it. He said God had taken away the cattle of your father and gave them to me. And see, the Lord, he don't never change. That's what's an answer for all this. Whether you be good or evil, the Lord has an app for, for all that. He has an app for whether you be good or evil, the Lord has an app for that. It doesn't matter. I mean, it, but the choice is yours. What side you want to fall on, because the Lord can deal with you wherever you at. But you just want to make sure that you're on the righteous side, because the Lord will deal with you even there, and he'll bless your hands. He'll bless you. But if, you de if you're dealing on the other side, on the evil side, you have a way the Lord the Lord's going to deal with you there, and you're not going to like it. Same way we see with this example of how Laban thought he was slick and ended up getting got by Jacob. But ultimately, he got got by the Lord. Did you finish that? That's in the nine. Go ahead. Verse 10. And it came to pass at the time that the cattle conceived that I lifted up mine eyes and saw in a dream, and behold, the rams which leaped upon the cattle were ring straight, speckled, and gristled. Mm -hmm. And the angel of the God and the angel of God spake unto me in a dream, saying, Jacob. Mm -hmm. And I said, Here I am. Mm -hmm. And he said, Lift up now thine eyes and see. All the rams which leap, leap upon the cattle are ring straight, mm -hmm. speckled, and gristled. Mm -hmm. For I have seen all that Laban doeth unto thee. See, because the Lord saw it all. 
and the Lord showed the Lord showed Jacob how to how to how to achieve what he needed to achieve. How he needed to take Laban's well. How he needed to uh, 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 fix it. So Laban ended up giving all his cattle up. So the Lord, he was in control of all that. Whether you be good or evil, God has not for that. And that's the act he used on Laban to fix him for what he had, how, how he had did Jacob. Let's look at uh. Exodus. Let's look at another example. So now Jacob, he left wealthy. He came there by himself, and he leaving with all these kids, the wife, all his wives, the handmaids, and some cattle, and all the cattle, and all the stuff that Laban had, and, and, and going to leave Laban there. Let's look at our Exodus chapter 29. Let's look at another example. Exodus chapter 20, and we're going to pick it up at verse 8. Exodus chapter 20. In verse 8, well, this is, uh, and we know what this is. This is the Kent Ten Commandments. We're going to read it, Exodus chapter 20 and verse 8. Go ahead. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Uh -huh. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. Uh -huh. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them, mm -hmm. all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and ha hallowed it. And we know the Lord instituted the Sabbath day all the way in Genesis. Some people say, well, that's the Jew Sabbath. They say some people say that's the Christian Sabbath. But there was no Jew or Christian around when the Lord had instituted the Sabbath. It was only God. So now, after all this, after he, he had instituted the Sabbath, after he had instituted the Sabbath, now, uh, uh, after he instituted the Sabbath, and, and the Lord had commanded us that we keep the Sabbath. You have some, that, you have people that say to all these things. Well, you know, try to separate, and then ultimately, because they don't want to do what the Lord say anyway. So now you have uh, uh, after the Lord had said, uh, well, you know, Betty, let's let's read uh, one more one more place. I didn't put this in here, but we're gonna skip over to Exodus 31 because we have you have people that that belittle the Lord's Sabbath. You know, they belittle His Sabbath because basically they want to do what they want to do anyway. You know, uh, talk about these floating Sabbaths. You know, talk about you and you know the Sabbath change from the from the from the seventh day to the first day, and ultimately all they're doing is writing themselves right out of the Lord's thousand years of peace. Ultimately, that's basically what they're doing. That's basically what they're doing. The Lord, He has this thing set up. His whole plan of salvation and how He's going to do things in the future. They're trying to change what the Lord has did by changing His Sabbath. But the Lord has said something that, that, that we as a people, should, well, everybody should always keep, uh, keep, uh, keep in mind. Exodus chapter 31, and pick it up at verse uh, uh, 14. Exodus 31 and verse 14. Go ahead. Ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you. Mm -hmm. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. Now, this is how serious it is. He said, everybody that's defileth the Sabbath shall surely be put to death. So the Lord had put this here, and he said, hey, if you, if you, if you defile my Sabbath, hey, I'm going, you, you know, you got you to gotta be killed. You got to be, you're going to be stoned to death, or bottom line is they're going to have to deal with you, and you're going to be cut off from your peace from among your people. So he said, in verse uh, 14, ye shall keep the Sabbath, therefore, for it is holy unto you, and it is holy. And this is the, something that the whole world is trying to change. They're trying to change that which is holy. So he said, it's holy. He said, every one of the fathers shall surely be put to death for whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. And we as a people, these are, our, these are our forefathers that he was speaking to, we, we are, are, are need to be ruled by an iron fist because we won't do what we're supposed to do. And the Lord, he, he knows this people, the stiff-necked people. So let's look at Numbers chapter 15. Numbers chapter 15. Because the Lord, because the Lord has to, he, he, he said, remember the Sabbath day? You know, in other words, he said, in, 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 in the other place, he talked about dealing with his law, how if you, if you break his law, you should be put to death or separated from among your people. That's the act for you breaking his law. And he don't ever change. Numbers chapter 15, and pick it up at verse 1. Just the, just the fact that he said you should be put to death should have been enough for this brother right here. Numbers 15, and pick it up at verse 32 and read. And while the children of Israel were in the wilderness, they found a man that gathered sticks upon the Sabbath day. Uh -huh. And they found that 
And they that found him gathering sticks brought him unto Moses and Aaron and unto all the congregation. Mm -hmm. And they put him in ward because it was not declared what should be done to him. And they didn't know, they, and, and again, they knew what the Lord had said, but they had to make sure that, hey, did the Lord, if the Lord wants to, you know, well, let's find out what we need to do this man because we need to be sure. So they sought the Lord because the Lord said, hey, kill him. So they're like, okay, let's go over here and we're going to seek the Lord. They didn't just go, out, go right out and just deal with him. They sought the Lord. Go ahead. Verse 35. And the Lord said unto Moses, the man shall surely be put to death. Uh -huh. All the congregation shall stone him with stones without the camp. Now, that's the app for him being disobedient. See, and the Lord, and remember, the Lord, he don't never change. In Malachi, he said, I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. He does not change. And we need to be scared of this. We, have, we need to be scared of this because this man right here, he could stand up and say, Lord, you can have me, you didn't have me stoned. And they, they pollute your Sabbath left and right. See, but the Lord's letting every, he's letting the wheat and the tares grow because, again, the Lord still has the same app for, this, for disobedience. He had the same app. But, again, he's going to grow. He's going to separate the wheat from the tares in the latter time. That's what he's going to do. So when you have people uh, change, call themselves changing the Sabbath, you know, or for that matter, you got these brothers around here talking about a, a floating Sabbath. You, you can't float a thousand years of peace. How you going to float a thousand years of peace? You can't do it. But you have people that are doing it, call themselves, you know, wrapped up in that stuff. See, but the Lord, he has an app for that, too. It's called the lake of fire. That's what that's called. But let's look at uh, Ephesians chapter 5. Finish 36. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, finish 36. Go ahead. 36. And all the congregation brought him without the camp and stoned him with stones. Mm -hmm. And he died as the Lord commanded Moses. As the Lord commanded Moses. So again, the Lord has an app for disobedience. And we should be, and this should, should, should uh, uh, we should keep this in mind. The Lord talks about, hey, uh, you know, we're going to be judged for every idle word. We even got to watch what we're saying. We got to watch how we talk. He said every idle word, and the Lord does not forget. So we need to be fearful of even that, of what we're saying. And when we're saying it, Ephesians chapter 5, Ephesians 5, we're going to look at another example. Whether you be good or evil, God has an app for that. Whether you be good or evil, God has an app for that. And these things, you don't learn. I mean, when you, when you start dealing with the word of God, you don't, it, it's not like you just wake up one morning and, and you just straight, you know everything. It's a growing process. You get hit upside the head, you grow some more. You get purged some more. You get purged here, you get purged there. It's, it's, it's a growing process. But you do the best you can, and the Lord will help you do the best you can by you remembering that there are consequences and repercussions for you being good or evil. Uh, Exodus chapter 5, and pick it up at verse 25 and read. Exodus 5, and, I'm sorry, Ephesians, I'm sorry, Ephesians 5 and verse 25. Ephesians 5 and verse 25. Go ahead. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and now, gave himself for it. Now, I want all the brothers, and they say, he said, husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the, loved the church and gave himself for it. So now, he said, husbands, love your wives. So all the brothers, all y'all just watch me, take your fist and hit yourself in the mouth real hard. You wouldn't do that. Why? Because you love yourself. You ain't going to hit yourself in the mouth. So the Lord said, don't hit your wife in the mouth. He said, husband, love your, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church. The Lord, he loved the church. He's showing his love for the church. How? Go ahead. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. He said that he might sanctify and cleanse it. And Lord, he said, husband, love your wife as Christ loved the church, at church and gave himself for it. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word, go ahead. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, uh -huh. not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, mm -hmm. but that it should be holy and without blemish. Go ahead. So ought men to love their wives as their own body. He said, love your wife just like you love your own body. You're not going to ball your fists up and hit yourself in the mouth because that's your body. You don't, like, don't want to knock your teeth out. You don't want to be looking all crazy. So why would you do your wife that way? You, know, you don't want to mistreat your wife. You know, do all, all types of foolishness to your wife because the Lord, he didn't do that to the church. So he said we're supposed to do this. We're supposed to act that same way that the Lord acted with the church. We're supposed to act that way with our wives. So he said, 
He said, so are men to love their own wives, love their wives, their own bodies. He that, go ahead. He that loveth his wife, loveth himself. If you love your wife, you love yourself. You love yourself. And again, like I mentioned earlier, this is not something that, that uh, uh, just happens overnight. You have the divorce rate is running rampant now. You marry today, divorce tomorrow. Marry today, divorce today. You know, and that's, what, that's how it is today. That's how in this day and age, because there's, you know, covenant breakers. You know, nobody believes in keeping promises. You know, everybody do what they want to do the way they want to do it. And again, like I mentioned earlier, the Lord, you might forget, but the Lord, he never forgets. He never forgets. He says, love your wife. He said, he that loveth his wife loveth himself. So you're not going to hit yourself in the mouth. You're not going to mistreat yourself. So why should you do it to your wife? Uh, Malachi chapter 2. Malachi, did you finish that? Yeah, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm going too fast. Malachi, tw- Malachi chapter, I'm sorry, Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 29. Go ahead. 5 and 29. Mm-hmm. For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord, and even as the Lord, the church. So he said in verse, in, in, in uh, Ephesians 5 and 29, he said, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh. You're not going to cut yourself and, or hit yourself in the mouth unless you are crazy. You're not going to do that to yourself, so why should you do it to your wife? He said, for we are, I'm sorry, uh, verse uh, 29, for no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourished it and cherished it, even as the Lord, the church. And the Lord expects us to do that. And if we don't do it, the Lord has an app for that. Malachi chapter 2, and pick it up at verse 13. Malachi 2 and verse 13. I know you got, I got some sisters out there saying, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But, hey, it, 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 the, sword, the sword cuts both ways, both ways. Malachi chapter 2 and verse 13. Malachi 2 and verse 13. Go ahead. And this have ye done again, covering the altar of the Lord with tears, mm-hmm. with weeping, and with crying out, mm-hmm. in so much that he regarded not the offering anymore, mm-hmm. or receiveth it with good will at your hand. So now you call you, you cover the altar with, with, with of the Lord with tears and weeping and crying out, and you find yourself you find yourself in trouble sometimes, and you wonder why you in the drama, why you catching hell, why you why you going through all these things, you know, and you don't know why, you know, and a lot of times it could be for this very big reason. Go ahead, fourteen. Yet ye say, Wherefore? Because the Lord hath been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth. The Lord see it. He see what you're doing. He see how you're getting down. He see how you're treating your wife. And if the Lord didn't, if he didn't see what you were doing to your wife, if he didn't care, this would not be here. He said, Yet ye say, Wherefore? Because the Lord hath been witness against, between thee and the wife of your youth. Go ahead. Against whom thou hast dealt treacherously, uh-huh. yet is she thy companion mm-hmm. and the wife of thy covenant. And the wife of your covenant, the wife of your promise. That you promised, you, you, you promised to, uh, be, before the Lord that you would, be, you, would, you would take care of her to love, honor, and cherish her, that you would treat her basically like the Lord did the church. And uh, I, I use the example, hey, the, uh, marriage is not an overnight sensation where everything is just like you marry today and then you wake up and everything is like roses and beautiful marriage you don't you won't put a a, a apple seed you won't go outside and plant an apple seed in the ground and come back the next day or for that matter two hours later and expect to see see a tree of apples you won't do it you have to nourish that thing you have to water it, take care of it, and let it grow a little bit. And you don't stop because you care about that, that plant that you planted. So you're going to water it some more. That's how marriage is. And you continue to water it and take care of it and purge it and keep the weeds out. Drama comes. You move that around. You know, you're not giving away to all types of, of you know, stuff happens in your marriage and you're ready to cut out. You're not going to do that. You're going to keep doing what you need to do because you care about that marriage. You care about your wife just like I messed with the plant, the tree. You're going to keep on trying to plant. You're going to keep on trying to nourish it and take care of it. And then eventually it's going to grow up and it's going to bear some fruit. 
It might be 10 years. It might be 20 years. But guess what? You are, you are in it for the long haul because you want to taste that fruit that you didn't bear, that you didn't plant it. That's the, the same way marriage is. You're going to do the best you can to take care of that thing because it's going to bear fruit, and eventually you're going to be happy that you didn't leave it. You're going to be happy that you didn't walk away from the covenant, and the Lord is going to bless you for that. He's going to bless you because that's you trying to, take care of, trying to take care of your marriage and love your wife, just like Christ said, just like he said. But verse 14, he said, yet ye say, wherefore, because the Lord has been witness, the Lord didn't saw it all, just like he saw Laban, how Laban was treating Jacob, he saw it all. He said, because the Lord has been witness between thee and the wife of thy youth, against whom thou hast dealt treacherously, yet is she thy companion of thy covenant. Go ahead. Verse 15. And did not he make one? Yet had he the residue of the spirit. Uh huh. And wherefore one? And you won. You won now. When you get when you get married, it's no more you and her, mine and yours. It's one. It's ours. And that's how it is. And and you are the head, and she follows you. Go ahead. That he might seek a godly seed. Mm -hmm. Therefore, take heed to your spirit. And let none deal treacherously against the wife of his youth. He said, hey, take heed to your spirit. Watch how you treat your wife. Because the Lord see it. The Lord see it. The Lord sees it. Let's look at, uh, let's look at uh, Genesis. Genesis chapter 3. Genesis chapter 3, and we're going to look at verse 16. Genesis 3 and verse 16. Now the women, they, like I said, you, you, you know, the, 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 the sword cuts both ways. So uh, you have Eve here, you know, Eve, she got deceived by Satan and ultimately, you know, talked her husband into some stuff and then everything is messed up now. So now she has her part that the Lord has an app for. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 16. Go ahead. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. Mm -hmm. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Now this is the app that the Lord had, had put up. He made because when Eve went out there and did what she did and, 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 and got her husband wrapped up in some stuff and her husband do it, he didn't stand up and take care of the business like he was supposed to. Then they ended up uh, pretty much uh, uh, in, uh, punished, being punished by the Lord. So now you got the man, he got to work by the sweat of his brow, and Eve, she got to bear children. So that's the way, that's what the, that's the program the Lord set up. So when you have, when you have, when you're having children, remember, that's the app that the Lord gave you because of what happened in the garden. So now women have to, and, and, and he said, verse 16, he said, unto the woman, I said, I will, I, unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow shalt thou bring forth children. It's supposed to be a good time. You know, they, it's, it's going to hurt. And the majority of people that, that I talk to, the majority of sisters, when you hear that they didn't have babies, it, they say it hurt. So he said, he said uh, uh, in sorrow thou shalt bring forth children, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over you. So by him ruling over you, and nowadays you, don't, you have sisters that believe that, hey, ain't no man going to rule over me. So you pretty much said the Lord is lying because he said, he said, thy desire shall be to thy husband and he shall rule over you. Let's look at uh, Ephesians chapter 5 now. Let's go back to Ephesians chapter 5 and 22. Whether you be good or evil, the Lord has an app for that. And that's the app that the Lord has set up. For the women. And the man got to do their part. Because basically, again, the Lord, he's watching everything. He's watching everything. We have to all do our part. And, is that, and, if, and if everybody knows their roles, stuff will go a lot smoother. You know, we are, you know, when, when, when we went into captivity, you know, and everything, and, and for that matter, when, 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 when Eve got deceived in the garden and, and, and sin came in, everything is upside down now. The women, are, like the scripture said in Isaiah chapter 3, uh, the women are the, are the rulers and the children are the oppressors. The man is out the picture, everything is upside down. When you have a brother trying to stand up, they look at him like he got a problem. You know, and then, you know, I'm, a, you know, you got uh, independent. I, I want to be independent, independent. And all this. the Lord had rules and regulations, but nobody wants to go about them. 
Nobody want to go about them. Everybody want to do what they want to do, how they want to do it. But that's not, the, how, how, that's not the way the Lord had it set up. Ephesians 5, pick it up at 22 and read. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands uh -huh. as unto the Lord. He said, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband just like you submit yourself to the Lord. It's like the man has to love his, love his wife just like the Lord loved the church and gave himself for it. You, the, the man has to love his wife because Christ, just like the Christ uh, loved the church and gave himself, so the woman, she has to submit herself just to, the, to her husband just like she su submit herself to the Lord. Imagine that. And again, the, this, this, this is in a book. The Lord said it. Go ahead. 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, mm -hmm. even as Christ is the head of the church. Remember we, 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 what we just read? He said your desire is going to be your husband, and he's going to rule over you. And so, and, and it's still going on even here. He said, for the husband is the head of the wife. There is an order. There's an order. Like I mentioned with these, uh, with these uh, uh, cell phones, you know, people uh, develop these different applications, and, and, they, use, and, and they put them in these phones for a, a, a specific purpose of doing a specific thing. You're not going to go on this phone and say, well, this app, this app, this camera that I got, it's supposed to, uh, this, this camera that I got, it's supposed to be able to talk to me. Or do it. No, it's supposed to take pictures, you know, and each app is for its own purpose. You know, the Lord, he has everybody in, in their purpose to do their, their specific job. The, the husband is the head, the woman is the help me, and you got the children. The Lord, and God, he's the head of all things when you, look, when you read uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. So he has an order. Go ahead. In the 23. And he is the savior of the body. Uh-huh. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, uh -huh. so let the wives be to their own husbands so, in everything. And, and some things. In everything. In everything. So when you are, are going, when you don't, don't want to submit yourself to your husband, you pretty much sense you don't want to submit yourself to the Lord. Because he said, do it as unto the Lord. So now when you go on contrary and you're kicking, you think about that. You think about that because when you're kicking and you have, like the scriptures talk about, you want them contentious, you know, you contentious. And, you know, how the scripture says in Proverbs, it's better to dwell in a, in, a, in a rooftop as opposed to being with a contentious woman. You want them? The Lord has an app for you. He has an app for you. If a man, he's mistreating his wife, hey, when, he's, when, he, needs to, uh, uh, when he needs help and he needs the Lord to deliver him, the Lord, he ain't trying to hear it. That's the app for him. Everybody, the Lord, whether you be good or evil, the Lord has an app for that. You just got to make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to do. Don't worry about everybody else. Worry about you. As long as you worry about you, the Lord will take care of everything else. Just like he did Laban. That's a big example for us. Uh, let's look at, uh, did you finish that? Yes. Let's look at uh, Exodus chapter 20 now. Exodus chapter 20. So now we dealt with the husband, we dealt with the wife, now we're going to deal with the kids. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 20. And again, this is a learning process. It don't happen overnight, but, you ha but it has to happen. We all have to learn because we're trying to be just like our father. Born again means, hey, we, it's, you know, we wait, we, we, we try to get, a, we want to have a body just like his eventually, but we still got to do the work to get there. We still got to do the work to get there. And all this that we are talking about, this is work. Exodus chapter 20, and pick it up at verse 12. Exodus 20 and verse 12. Go ahead. Honor thy father and thy mother, uh -huh. that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. So he said, honor your father, your mother. So let your days be long upon the land. So he said, hey, give your parents honor so that he don't kill you and you don't die early. So th and, that, and that'll help you. This will help you right here. He said, so that day, your days will be long upon the earth where the Lord, where the Lord upon the land where the Lord thy God give thee. Let's look at uh, Le Leviticus chapter 19 now. I'm sorry, uh, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy chapter 18. It's like Deuteronomy chapter 21 and verse 18. Deuteronomy 21 and verse 18. So we see the, what the Lord said. Now we're going to see what the people say. How they do, how, how flesh tends to go about doing things. Because everybody got to try. The Lord always has to make an example. Deuteronomy chapter 21 and verse 18. 
Go ahead. If a man have a stubborn and rebellious son, which will not obey the voice of his father or the voice of his mother, and that when they are, have ch chastened him, will not hearken unto them. Now, now you got a hard head, a hard, a hard head son here. Remember, it's cause and effect. The Lord said, if you have this, this, should, this is what should be done. Go ahead. Then shall his father and his mother lay hold on him and bring him unto the elders of the city and unto the gate of his place. Mm -hmm. And they shall say unto the elders of his city, this our son is stubborn and rebellious mm -hmm. and will not obey our voice. He is a glutton and a drunkard. He said he's stubborn, he's rebellious, he's a glutton, and he's a drunkard. Go ahead. And all the men of his city shall stone him with stones that he die. Mm -hmm. So shalt thou put evil away from among you, and all Israel shall hear and fear. So here's another, here's an app that the Lord has for the children, for, for people that don't obey their children, that, that don't obey their, their, their parents. So he had this brother, he's, he's stubborn, he's rebellious, he won't listen to his, he won't listen to his, uh, to his, his mother and his father. So you had, they had to take him out there, and, and uh, you had the elders of the city, you had the brothers, you had the older brothers, they would stand up.